Hey everyone and welcome back to another Iron Man Progress video. In the last video I opened up a stack of medium cassettes and received my first set of Ranger boots. And the plan now is to continue on you know, in this video doing some odds and end things in order to get back to Slayer and doing it a little more efficiently. So it's finally time to level up thieving and in the process of doing so I want to get a Pharaoh Scepter in order to build the ancient altar in my house. But before heading back to the pyramid I figured I'll go ahead and get some levels here, pickpocketing, in order to get higher levels in the pyramid. So, I guess I'll see you back with the level. So my plan changed very quickly. Not even a level in, I remembered how much I hate pickpocketing at lower levels. The fail rate is just too demoralizing to keep it up. So I figured I'd go ahead and start scepter hunting since eventually I'll need to get a second one for a clue step anyway. So from here I'm sure it's either a level or a scepter drop you'll see for quite a few clips. And thieving level number two of the day. So my current method is just go ahead and hit all the gold chests on my way to the highest level that I can get and search all the urns in there. Which will give me a good balance of experience and odds of getting a scepter. And occasionally I'll open the sarcophagus as well, which drops the scepter at the same rate as the gold chest, but it just takes much longer to open up. And after looking up on the wiki, the drop rate of the scepter is about 1 in 1,000 of a successful loot from either the chest or the sarcophagus. And at higher level rooms, you fail less often when looting. So on average, I'm currently opening 8 per total run and failing I uh, guess about three each so saying that I get five successful loots each game and when each game is about a five minute run and reset I'm getting about 60 loots per hour so it looks like to be on average of the drop rate it'll take me about 17 hours if I keep at those numbers. So for anyone wondering why I haven't posted in almost two months for my Iron Man I've actually been away for work and just haven't either had the time during the work week or during the weekend I've actually been doing a fair amount of traveling. I've had a great time, saw some cool places, met some new people, met up with some family members, but all the clips before 77 Thieving I had done prior to that trip two months ago. But now I'm finally back home and will likely start playing RuneScape a little more regularly. And yet another level, 80 Thieving. We can now pickpocket heroes, which I think is an elite task for Artie. And here comes the level I've been waiting for. That would be 80 Thieving. One at this level so I can get into another higher level in the pyramid here. It gets quite a bit more experience. I don't know the you know rates for it since I'm not doing the most efficient method here. Since I'm going back and forth between the chest, the sarcophagus, and each of the urns as well. But should still be a significant amount. And with that successful steal, now 82 thieving. Can steal from or stalls now. And you guessed it, yet another thieving level. This will be 83 thieving and no actual benefit to this level specifically. And there it is folks, the first fair scepter on the account. I actually expect to be here for quite a while longer getting some more thieving levels before getting it. But I couldn't be more excited right now because I was actually debating shortly before this if I would go through, power through in order to get the second scepter since using the teleport for this one would help speed it along. But I just figured, what the hell, I want to get out of here and move on to something else. Because like I said earlier, I set the goal to get this almost two months ago so I can make the altar which will help with uh, spellbook swapping for Slayer, so I can go ahead and swap the Ancients instead of coming all the way out here to the Pyramid each time, which just gets kind of annoying. But, glad to go ahead and knock this out, and I'll be back another time for another one. There's apparently a couple things I need to do before making the altar. It's been quite a while, so I had forgotten what I needed. First item will be the Signet right here, which is easy, costs nothing. But next, I need to get a magic stone, which cost me about a mil, and I am broke. I actually pulled all my money out of the kingdom before I went on my trip, since I wasn't able to keep up with funding it and such. But, luckily in the bank, I have quite a few alcohols from opening the clue caskets in my last video. So I'll just go ahead and alcohol this stuff that I have in order to get more funds to get this thing going again. 
I'm a little short on nature runes right here, but I've got enough to alcohol the items of noticeable values at least, which will be more than enough money to you know, get what I need to at this point. There's really no point in buying the natures in order to out these gold amulets, since I'll pretty much just break even with that, and eventually I'll either sell those to oops, I'll sell those to a general store, or if I have an abundance of natures at some point, I might out them, get some extra experience, a little extra cash out of it. But I guess I'll see you back when I'm done alking. All right, and here's one of the richest NPCs in the game. And there goes 975k. And what am I missing? 10 limestone bricks. Ah, oh, thought it was just one. Now I'll be back with those. And that's everything I need for the ancient altar. At least I don't gotta go buying 10,000 astral runes. Or hell, 5k blood and souls. So this is actually the cheaper of the altars right now, I think. But there it is. Easy swap to Ancients. Back to Standard. Don't even lose prayer while doing it. Not too bad of an investment right there. So something I have not done on any of my accounts while being on Old School RuneScape is do the holiday events. This is my actual first Halloween one that I've done since starting up. I think it was on... The day Old School RuneScape was released, when I created my first account on it. it. Took quite a bit of time off, but still though, it's quite some time for not doing any of them. Figure I'll go ahead and get the rewards out the way for this. Man, the goblins of Lumbridge never get a break. It's such a nostalgic place for noobs and ragtag gear like Mad Melvin here to get their first combat levels at. Even in more modern day old school RuneScape, like the Dead Man tournaments, when they were active, they were just constantly being slaughtered on day one as you couldn't kill much else efficiently. But other than that, most experienced players just start off questing in order to get their early combat levels nowadays. I like how the entire time that this guy's been trapped behind this wing barricade, he's been able to just telly home. But he wants to go ahead and get me just running around for him, and then just telly out afterwards anyway. Like, that made any sense to do. So this right here should be the end of this holiday event. Yeah, there we go. And there's, I guess, all the items I could actually fit in the inventory this time around. Not sure how many more are out there, but I'll go pick up those once I clear this inventory out. Go ahead and throw what I can into the chest in my house. But there we go. And I'll be back when I see you with the rest of it. Apparently there are a lot more items out there for the Halloween events of past. Just never taken a look at any of this. But after you do one of the events, you get all of these items as well. I'm go ahead and throw a copy of everything into my house for now. But anytime you want to go ahead and get any of the holiday items, if you've done the event that it correlates to, you can always come over to Diango and drain our village and pick one up. And with all that in the box, there's one last thing for me to do. Get an extra set of these. There's a little Easter egg for it. And if you dye this in here, you actually get spookier sets. They're just the spooky set. I feel like for years, the community has been wanting to get a set of these robes, which are similar to the ones used in the Ghost Ahoy quest, I think it is. Which, now we can finally get out and walk around. Looking like a ghost, I guess. So since I've been out of the game for quite some while, some things have changed, and those things have changed some of my plans. A couple episodes ago, I got my first Zenite drop from Demonic Gorillas, which I plan to go do a Borrows episode next so I can get Chaos Runes in order to sell for an Onyx, with the intent on making that into a Necklace of Anguish. However, with Jagex cracking down on third-party clients, forcing RuneLite to remove the plugin to help at Gorillas, I'm not sure if I want to be in a hurry to get that necklace or just save it and make a Ring Suffering first for killing the Zora, since having a blowpipe will make killing Gorillas a hell of a lot easier. And then on the other hand, I know having I'm gonna well having the Chaos Gems net or Chaos runes now would be helpful as well go ahead and get the onyx since i'll have to at some point 
But I do know that having that trident will be a lot easier to kill bars than using this Ivan staff and then having to recharge it. But I'm still not decided at this point, so I'll probably just chill here, fish for a bit until I make up my mind on where to take my account next. But until then, I want to go ahead and thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.